Welcome to the Phoenix Mystery School and another episode on this podcast. If you've been following along in my journey, this is my first episode under my new branding, the Phoenix Mystery School. So in that fashion, I do want to introduce you to a powerful archetype and the one that's been with me for majority of my life. And this is the Phoenix. The Phoenix is a powerful archetype because it represents deep transformation. It represents the power of our resilience. It upgrades our being in so many ways. It creates a sense of strength, bravery, and also a brighter sense of who we are. It's also about rebirth and in our life, we are going to become so many different versions of ourself. And every time we create a new version, we actually go through a grieving process because an old version literally goes through that death cycle so that we can step forward into a new way of being. The Phoenix also represents our deep inner knowing It is intertwined with the fire element. So with those components, it's our connection to our spirit, the I am consciousness, beyond identities, beyond concept. And it's also around harmony. So when we think harmony in the body, mind, and spirit, we think of all the processes that occurs in our body with no excess activity. So things being in harmony in the body, but then also having that sense of harmonious aspects in our environment as well. So anytime there's a disruption in the harmony cycle, and if harmony doesn't go back to its natural state, this is where we can actually fall into more depressive moods and states. The Phoenix is all about creation as well as destruction. Most people think about the Phoenix as that complete destruction pattern, like going into that rock bottom place so that you can rise up from the ashes. And it's not wrong, but there's so many other beautiful, amazing things that come along with that. And it is creation. Yes, it's the life death, life death cycle. And also duality. And of course, we live in duality consciousness, being here on this planet right now. We come here to ride these ebbs and flows and waves of being human. And archetypes are powerful states of consciousness. They are a symbol of consciousness that we can access at any point in time. I have learned so many lessons over my life through the Phoenix. The first time I ever met the Phoenix, I was about 14 years old. And can you imagine at 14 already knowing what tattoo you're getting at 18? I found a style of the Phoenix. And this is when we first started getting internet back in that day. (laughs) And I found the perfect Phoenix tattoo. And at the time, I didn't know why I was so called and so drawn to it. It was something I knew that I needed. And of course, fast forward to 18, it is what I got. And at that point in time, being 18, I was going through some pretty rough transformations. I left an abusive situation. It wasn't healthy. It was very toxic. And at that time, I just didn't see it until it was basically in my face. And being able to hear my guides, the archetypes speak to me in ways that gave me so much strength. It was a big one to get that Phoenix on my body permanently. And since then, that archetype has ridden through the waves of life with me. I haven't always given it my full attention by any means. 
but I think it's very suiting that it's coming through now, coming full circle into so many aspects of life. So no matter what you're going through, this archetype can help you really dive deep. It can help you access your states of creation, that fire within so that you may tune into your inner knowingness, your own discernment. And understand what in your life might actually need to change. There's been so many times that I have burned up things in my life because they no longer were healthy or suited to me. And regardless of this fact, it isn't an easy place to be in to know what isn't aligned for you anymore, what isn't healthy for you anymore, even though you may have had multiple conversations or tried to maybe steer another direction. Sometimes there's nothing else left but for us to actually step back, reassess, and take a different path. Rebirth cycles are not easy. You literally shed everything that isn't you, whether that's old conditioning, patterns and emotions, but even potential friendships and people in your life, potential family members. Not coming from a place of judgment, but just knowing that at times your boundaries need to be strong. And not all family members are healthy. Not all friendships are healthy, but they do teach us things about ourself. What we are and are not willing to accept or tolerate or bring into our lives energetically. Where we might have insecurities or fears, possibly. Maybe we have that people pleaser just wanting to be liked, wanting to be accepted. And for fear of having no one, we keep people around. And then, of course, there's times where we're actually the toxic person, too. (laughs) Where we have to really address what's going on within. Why we're projecting, why we are treating others in a way that they shouldn't be treated, not respecting their boundaries. And we all go through this cycle. No one is innocent from this. We live in duality. There'll be times where we are (laughs) the toxic one. And then we realize. And then we start to try and do better, in a sense. So I know in my lifetime, I have definitely gone through those cycles. If you had met me about 11 years ago, and I talk about this often, I guarantee you, (laughs) no one would have liked me at all. And not that it's about how many people can like you, but realistically, I did not treat people very well. I was very much in my wounded feminine, wounded masculine, very much egocentric at the time, just wanting to have a means to an end, so to speak. So if there's something I wanted, I got it. And not in the most polite way or a good way, I should say. Not that anything has to be polite necessarily, (laughs) but I honestly used people because I was so insecure. I didn't care if it hurt somebody else. And I was drinking a lot. Self-sabotaging, self-destruction, self-poisoning. So when I talk about sometimes we're the toxic ones, truly, we obviously can be when we're unaware of what we're doing and why. At the time, I didn't have a lot of emotional maturity, even though lots of people call me mature. I guess you're mature if you're in a leadership position at a young age, sure. But it's often people who are hurting inside that lash out and hurt others. They're in such a defensive self-preservation mode that they lash out. Doesn't make it okay, obviously. But knowing where this is coming from, it can be helpful to understand, not take it personally, step back, set some boundaries. 
because it wasn't until I started losing some important people that I realized like, hey, maybe I should not be this way. <laughs> of course, I had a lot of multiple health issues. I worked a lot. I was stressed a lot and not using this as a way to excuse any behavior because it's not. But it got to the point where I really just didn't like who I was. I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror anymore. I just wanted to have a normal life. And it didn't seem like I was going to have anything close to that. And now, you know, 11 years later, I'm actually thankful for that. For all these experiences. Because I've had to forgive myself so many times. And hold compassion and love for myself. And I do the same for others. At least I try to the best of my ability. We're human. We're still going to have those days where we're judgmental or where we might think or say something that is perceived in a not so good light. We're human. We have those days. It's all about catching it and understanding why and working through it. So when you start working through emotions, it's imperative that you understand when they do show up, what that is representing for you. If there's anger, if there's, you know, sadness, is there something deeper here? Investigate with that sense of kindness. We've all been through traumatic experiences. And when people think trauma, they think immediately like big bad things, like immediate extremely dangerous, crazy situations, you know, like maybe a massive car accident or, you know, they think of some big abuse, like physical stuff. But traumas can be as simple as being criticized and judged on a consistent basis. It could be having families that don't have clear boundaries. So enmeshed families, and enmeshed doesn't always mean like angry, emotionally distant families. It can also be the families that are too close as well, which can turn into control. And the reason why I'm bringing all these aspects up is because these are important to really look at, you know, before you start working with the Phoenix, is understanding what patterns do I have? necessary that you know why, but usually you'll find a reason. For me, I treated people terribly because I was never accepted. I was never treated nicely in my life by anyone. I always felt alone. So it was a defense mechanism to keep people away. Because if I just wasn't a kind person, I wouldn't have to invite people in. They wouldn't see me and I wouldn't be in danger. And that is obviously a faulty belief because of my lack of trust, my pain that I held on to so deeply and so personally. I was afraid to be hurt. I was afraid to be seen. And even though all I wanted was to feel like I belonged and have a good core group of people, it also terrified me to have a sense of stability. Another trauma could just be instability, not having solid foundations, people you can trust and rely on. So before we invite the Phoenix in, we do a quick guided meditation. But before we do that, I want you just to sit relaxed in your chair, feet flat on the ground if you can. And I want you just to take some nice, slow, and controlled breaths. My favorite to do is breathing in for the count of four, hold for that split second, and then breathe out for the count of four. We're just going to do that a couple of times.
I want you to really just feel into where you are in life right now. Are you currently going through a transition? Are you becoming a different version of you right now? Is there a past experience that's coming to mind or an emotion that you would like to transform? Where can you invite in a greater sense of harmony? Where are you looking for a transformation? So I want you to hold that in your mind. I'm not doing anything with it yet. And then I want you to close your eyes if you're not already. And I want you to feel or visualize yourself surrounded by fire. Knowing that even if you touch this fire, it's not going to hurt you. It is warm. It's representing your own fire within the fire element. And as you feel and breathe into this fire, start to become more heart-centered, more discerning, more inner knowing, more trusting with your spirit. Take a nice deep breath here. And I want you to bring that emotion in or that piece of you you want to transform or if you're stepping out of a version of you and into a new one, I want you to visualize or feel you doing that energetically, shedding that skin, stepping into the new frequency. As you're about ready to do that, I want you to visualize or feel the phoenix coming in, that big majestic bird. Can you feel its wings as it flies in to greet you? Take a moment and with your hand over your heart, Connect your heart with that of the phoenix. You'll know you're connected to the phoenix when you feel that immense sense of strength, of courageousness, of confidence, and inner power and inner knowing. And I want you to ask the Phoenix if there is a message for you. It could be a feeling, it could have words, maybe you're seeing an image play. And then I want you to step into the energy of that phoenix. Feeling how free it is to have those wings. Stepping into that energy field of rebirth and transformation. And with the old emotions or old frequencies that are no longer serving you, 
Maybe it is a connection to relationships or friendships, maybe jobs. I want you to visualize the fire surrounding what that is or the cord attachment to what you're wanting to transform. And remember, the fire isn't destroying. The fire is creating harmony and transmuting, neutralizing the emotional charges. Creating a sense of harmony. And watch that fire spread to where it needs to go. Burning up aspects of the past that are being transmuted. How does it feel to be able to make these changes for yourself? No judgment, no anger. Just a knowing of what needs to shift and change, the fire being a vehicle of transformation. You can even bring the fire into your body and see what needs to shift and change. And then when you feel ready, you can step out of the energy of the phoenix if you like. You can step into the new frequency of you that is free of those emotional holdings or anything that's no longer aligned. And I really just want you to take a moment here and feel into that. How does your energy feel from before you did this? Do you feel a sense of lightness? A sense of <sighs> relief? Notice what you notice. See if your body has more range of motion. And then when you feel ready, you can open your eyes back up and come back into this space. Thanking the Phoenix archetype for assisting you and write down any messages that came through for you. They may make sense now, they may not, and that's okay. And you can repeat this as often as you like. The goal is to create movement, integration, to step into new frequencies of who you actually are. And to keep evolving as a person, there isn't just one end destination. Over your life, you're going to become at least, at least 10 different people over the course of your lifetime. So you're constantly getting to know yourself on a deeper level every few years, if not sooner. It's a constant evolution. So remember that when the phoenix comes to you and that fire surrounds you, it's not a negative thing. Maybe there's a transformation taking place and you're being wrapped in the wings of the phoenix to hold you for comfort and knowing you are safe. And sometimes this is helpful to visualize when you're going through a hard time, feeling that embrace of the phoenix. And even with that in mind, also holding yourself in that moment. 
of love and compassion. I hope you got some value out of this episode. And if you have questions, feel free to email me at trinitysage333 at gmail.com or find me at the phoenixmysteryschool.ca. And I'll catch you soon on another episode.